Now before we log into our PayPal account, we're going to discuss three things. One being popular payment gateways. Now there are a whole bunch of different payment gateways that you can find, probably hundreds, but PayPal and Google Checkout are the most widely used and popular right now probably. And the only reason I'm going to focus on PayPal is because PayPal is the most popular and widely used right now. And it's the most trusted. Shoppers love just uh, having their PayPal account and they can shop at a hundred stores online and not give any one of those stores their credit card information and that's why they like it. Now with Google Checkout, I'm sure it's a great service and everything, but with Google Checkout versus PayPal, it's kind of the way I feel about Google versus Bing. I think Google is a much better search engine than Bing. I think Microsoft had really no rhyme or reason except making money and more online traffic for themselves to make a search engine. Google mastered the search engine and then Microsoft comes in like 5,000 years later and they're like, oh, we got a search engine that's better than Google's. No, you don't. That search engine blows, and I like Microsoft products. I just don't like Bing. So that's what I'm saying. I don't think Google Checkout should be moving in on online payment processing. I don't think Google should be moving in on that. It's kind of like rappers going and becoming actors after they beco become a successful rapper. It's like, oh, you're a rapper? Okay, you can act now. No, you can't. You can rap. You can't act. Now, no matter which payment processor you go with, which payment gateway you use, it doesn't matter. <coughs> <coughs> they're going to have encrypted type buttons versus developer button code now using encrypted buttons defeats fraudulent purchases and I know a lot of people that have uh, set up stores online they hear a lot about people price jacking so price jacking can occur and if you want you can pause and read all this that I have there and I tell you how price jacking can occur right here. If somebody knows the gateway system well and programming, so if they're a good programmer and they know that gateway system real well, whether it be Google Checkout, some other service, PayPal, whichever kind of online payment processor, if they know that system well and they're a good programmer, they can replicate your store items on a page on their server and simply change $100 price that you may have on your current items to one dollar price. So if you're not using encrypted button code in your store, you protect yourself as the merchant by making sure the payments match the product purchases. So when you get all the invoicing or whatever back from PayPal or Google Checkout, you make sure that if somebody bought jeans and it's supposed to be ten dollars, you make sure what their payment is is ten dollars. It's very simple. And you can even, I, I give you a little note here, it's not very tough to do or script a PHP system to do it for you automatically so you don't have to check everything. Since we're going to be using IPN with PayPal, we can cross-reference prices in the database with what the checkout amount was. So you can see what all they bought and you just make sure, and PHP can do this automatically on the fly. You can make sure that that checkout amount matches the products they bought and only then do you process that within your system. And if it doesn't, you throw up a red flag in your system. Email yourself, danger, 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 somebody's trying to price tamper. But like I said, using encrypted buttons, you can defeat price tampering. In, within PayPal, you can make encrypted buttons that nobody can price tamper. And they're using the hosted button ID code now. But that's for if you want to manually make your buttons within your gateway account and then bring that code over to your site. But what we're doing is we're going to use the developer buttons. All payment gateways give you a, a set of developer tools and APIs that you can use that will work with their system. So we're going to be using the developer buttons. And what that is is certain code that you can apply. It will be a little bit less secure than using the encrypted buttons. So like I said, encrypted buttons, there's no way that I know of that anybody can do any price tampering. With the developer buttons, it's a little bit open in the in the source code view somebody can view your source and view the button code and recreate that button code somewhere alright so the last thing before I show you what's going on at PayPal is SSL encrypted pages SSL encrypted pages are only needed when you are accessing or transferring private personal or financial information over your web pages so if your store incorporates PayPal IPN or any other mechanism that gets variables passed to it 
you will want to incorporate an SSL certificate into your online store website. It is only required that you use HTTPS secured URLs when personal data or financial data is accessed or transferred to pages. Pages on your site that do not handle private data do not need to be encrypted pages. You can run HTTPS secure pages on all of the pages of your website if you want to give shoppers more confidence. So what you do is you buy an SSL certificate, it's like 25 bucks around 25 bucks from your hosting company and they can easily apply it to your hosting account or they can help you to apply it show you the steps and I think it, I think it has to be the main domain on your hosting account so if you maybe have six domains in your hosting account I think you can only apply SSL to the main domain on that account to use the secure functionality SSL provides you simply make all of your sites navigation have HTTPS instead of HTTP and this can be done using an HT access file directive that will force all of the URLs to have the HTTPS instead of HTTP no matter what somebody tries to type in to the URL address bar okay now we're gonna go log into PayPal and I'll show you a few things that you'll want to know there okay so after you create your PayPal account you'll notice that they offer a whole ton of payment processing solutions for your website website payments pro if you want to give your customers all on-site shopping experience what I'm going to be showing is website payment standard solution and that one uses it will usher people to the PayPal payment gateway and then will send them back to your site so you can save 30 bucks a month if you want that kind of setup or if you want them to be on your site the whole time which is a more professional better setup you can spend the thirty dollars a month and the same kind of forms and everything that would they would use on PayPal once they get to PayPal using the payment standard the same kind of forms would be on your site for the person to use but using payment standard the person is ushered to the payment gateway and then right when they check out using PayPal they're ushered back to your site now some people were asking me uh, about handling taxes and shipping and currency and things like that PayPal will allow you to handle currency types within your PayPal account that's why I haven't discussed it yet because it's really it all goes down within your merchant account at whatever gateway you choose but PayPal will handle your currency types it'll handle you can accept any currency and they'll convert it for you it'll handle taxes you can ex establish what you want your tax rates to be for all your products and it also handles shipping and we'll be discussing that just a little bit you can research that a lot more on your own. There's a whole lot of information to be read at PayPal. And they all have the, a developer section, which I'm going to be showing you as well. So log into your PayPal account. Now mine, I'm not going to show you all my private details and everything like that, but this is what my menu bar looks like on the home page when I log into PayPal. And you can see mine is a mine is a business type of account, and it's verified. Now I could spend... I could do... 12 whole tutorials just about PayPal but I'm not going to spend a lot of time I'm just going to show you this profile page which is probably the most important page within your merchant account at PayPal okay let's take a look at these things we have here all the way on the left you have account information in the middle financial information on the right selling preferences so I'm going to show you I'll just lead you to areas of interest that I want to target I'm not going to show you what inside of all of these links that you can do on your own but I'm going to show you certain things that are key important things that we'll have to know that we can adjust alright I want you to check out merchant fees and then that way you can find out exactly how much PayPal is going to charge you when somebody checks out on your site or in your store you can see exactly how much they take out percentage for each transaction to get their cut for offering you this nice safe secure service and giving your shoppers peace of mind because when a shopper sees PayPal let's face it you know when somebody's checking out every, I don't know and maybe not everybody's like me but when I'm checking out somewhere they better have PayPal checkout option or I won't buy anything from there so definitely check out merchant fees that's what it was getting started steps so you want to click this and when you're on this page just make sure you complete all of these actions so you get verified as a business so that's how money is switched back and forth you know your store makes a bunch of money and it doesn't go straight into your bank account it goes into your PayPal account and at any time you can transfer the monies from PayPal from your PayPal account to your local business account wherever your, your local bank is 
And what's cool about PayPal is you can even get a debit card. I love using my PayPal debit card. Okay, so that's all I really want to show you on the right side there. Now in the center, what do we got here? Uh, I think this stuff is mostly for your, if you use your PayPal account to buy something. Say you wanted to buy something from Walmart.com or whatever store online. You can use this PayPal account to buy things online. Uh, we don't need to look at any of that, but definitely look it over in your own time. You should look under, look over all these links. Now the ones on the right here is what I want you to take a good look at. This is your selling preferences. So this is all definitely important stuff. See there you have sales tax. And I'm not even going to try and train you on PayPal. That's not what this tutorial is about. I'm trying to show you how to make a custom PHP cart and a MySQL database to hold your inventory and all that and connect it to your gateway. you got to learn about your gateway on your own. But I'm just showing you where these things are so you can investigate further. Set up your sales tax there. Set up shipping calculations, shipping preferences. This is where you got your save buttons. You make more buttons. You can make any kind of buttons you want here. You can make add to cart buttons, buy now buttons, gift certificates, donate buttons, uh, all kind of crap. And that's where you make your encrypted buttons. I'm not going to be showing you how to make the buttons through this system here. We're going to look at PayPal's developer tools, and they give you different ways to make and script your buttons if you're doing custom things, making custom stores. Payment receiving preferences, you definitely want to look at that, because that, I think, deals with uh, converting currencies. Like, you can accept all kind of different currencies from around the world, but PayPal will convert them for you if you select that kind of option within your selling preferences. you got to select the option, I think, if you want to accept any kind of currency and have PayPal automatically convert it to your currency. Instant payment notification. That's what I'm going to click on in a second here. What else we got? PayPal shops. Nah, I don't need you to look at that. But you definitely want to look at all of this. Uh, customer service, website payment preferences. You want to look at that. See? This is the auto return. But I'm going to be showing you how to do this through the buttons. But you can set it in here and just set the page that you want PayPal to auto return them to after they check out. What else we got here? Eh, we don't need to look at any of that. And here's encrypted payment settings. Dynamically encrypt your website payments by downloading PayPal's public certificate and provide PayPal your public certificate. You will need to dynamically encrypt website payments with your own code to use this feature. Learn more. I'm not going to show you how to encrypt anything. That's all on you. And it'll probably be different within Google Checkout and other different gateway services that you might be using. So I'm not going to go very far with everything. I'm just going to show you how to tap into PayPal's developer tools and integrate IPN. That way every purchase that's made, IPN is instant payment notification. That way every purchase that's made using your store your MySQL database is going to get fed some all of that information. That way you can do custom in-house handling of all that data. And then the series is done. Once we get done with the instant payment notifications and you're getting all this data back from PayPal after people check out and everything is getting stacked into your MySQL database, that's it. I'm not going to show you guys how to make customer profiles and accounts so your customers can log in. That's all on you. You can go check out my social networking type website tutorials and then integrate the two and you'll have your whole thing. So for now, all we need is to click this instant payment notification button. Now you can choose to use your in account settings here or you can put it directly on the button. So you can click that choose IPN settings notification URL would be your HTTPS and it has to be HTTPS and whatever whatever URL your website is blah blah dot com slash my IPN script dot PHP that's how it would be so you can have my IPN script dot PHP be in your site it's gonna be a file on your site when people check out that script is gonna be given a whole bunch of variables behind the scenes. PayPal is going to send all these variables behind the scenes 
for the person what their name is, the amount they checked out for, what they bought, blah 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 blah. So that's how the magic works. And at that point, since it's a PHP script that's gathering up all this these variables for the payment of the whole transaction, you can put these things in a MySQL database, email these things to yourself in a custom fashion, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to show you a uh, a nice IPN script example, so don't you worry. But I'm not going to I'm going to cancel this because I'm not going to set it up like this. I'm going to use the actual button programming using the developer tools to signify which IPN script that I want to hit on my site. And I think that'll show you a little more of a dynamic approach to it. So okay, so in part 19, I'll introduce you to the PayPal developer section show you all the tools that you have available to work with as a programmer there. And we can take what we need, understand and learn what variables they want us to use. We'll take all that information and we'll put it into effect within our website. That way we can properly communicate things to PayPal in a custom way.